Hello everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully and today I wanted to share with you um, information about my fiber group. Um, this is something that I started a few years ago and it's been kind of self-sustaining uh, successfully over the past five or six years. Um, and you know, it's not something I necessarily set out to uh, keep going for such a long time, but I'm so glad it has. Um, it's a great resource for the people that attend. Um, so a few years ago, I was getting a little frustrated um, that there wasn't a yarn shop nearby where I could go hang out and knit. Um, most yarn shops do have a knitting night that they host, um, but our closest yarn shops are 20 miles or more away. And in Vermont, that can mean a 45 minute drive because the roads have to go through the mountains. So I was trying to get together um, what I was originally calling a sip and stitch. Um, I thought, oh, well, I like beer and I like working on my knitting. So let's put those two things together. Um, and I found a group of people that were interested in starting up a group. Um, and we decided to meet at a local bar on a night when they didn't have as many patrons. Um, but that didn't quite work out the way that I had planned. The bar was pretty dark and so it was hard to see our knitting and the tables aren't very big. So there's hard to, um, you know, it's, it's hard for people to have enough room to work on their projects and also eat their dinner or drink their beer. Um, and the, it ended up that a number of the people that started to come um, really weren't into the bar scene uh, in the first place. Um, so we decided to move to the local library. And although that doesn't have the fun of being able to have a beer while you do your work, um, it's really, it's, it's a more neutral ground to meet. And it's really solidified our group and made it so that everyone can participate. And I think that has contributed to the longevity of the group itself. Um, now, this is a mixed fiber group, so it's not just knitting. Um, we have a strong contingent of folks who do rug hooking. We have people who do crochet, spinning. Um, we even had a lace tatter uh, there at one point. And we have a couple who also um, sometimes bring small sewing projects to work on. And I think part of the appeal to this group is that it is so open and flexible. So not only can people bring whatever fiber craft they're working on at the moment, um, they can bring, you know, whatever level of knowledge that they have in that craft and get help. Um, so if they're stuck on a pattern or, you know, trying to come up with a design and they're not sure if something's going to look good, they can bring it to the group and get some honest advice on how to proceed. Um, and we do advertise uh, when we put out announcements that the group is for all fiber crafts and all uh, experience levels so that newcomers um, can feel welcome there. And speaking of newcomers, I think that's another aspect to this group that's been really successful is that we really make a point to welcome new people and make them feel included right away. Um, if you've ever gone into a group cold um, and not knowing anyone else, you know how hard it can be just to get up the courage to even show up. And so if you walk through that door and there's not an immediate warm reaction, um, it can be very intimidating. So I think a lot of people try to be uh, welcoming, um, but you really have to make an extra effort with new people. Um, so smiling, saying the words welcome, um, and making sure that you introduce everyone and do those introductions multiple times. Um, that's something that we do is almost every meeting we go around the table and just say our first name. Um, and that's a great reminder and it helps people learn the names over a few meetings and not feel, you know, stupid or out of touch with the group for not knowing everybody's name. Um, and it's those little touches that really help New people, new people become regulars. Um, something else that I do with the group is that we have a very informal um, message board. I run it through Yahoo Groups just because it's free and easy. Um, but there's other services out there that you could use. And 
All I really do is send out the monthly reminder that our next meeting is coming up. Um, but other people can post whatever they'd like relative to Fibercraft. So sometimes we share patterns. Uh, we talk about events that are coming up, wool shows or craft fairs that are coming up. Um, people can post, you know, what they're working on in between meetings. Um, and there's not a lot of activity, but I think just having that way to touch base with everyone and not having one person, you know, be the boss or be in charge of the group um, has been, you know, another way for everyone to feel included and like they're driving the group and that they're getting out of it what they want. Um, now, I say that there's no boss, but in some ways there does need to be a leader, someone who's going to be sending out those monthly reminders or you know, weekly, depending on how many, how, how often you meet. Um, someone who's going to set the schedule initially, um, and I would do that with input from the group, but at some point somebody just has to say, okay, we're always going to meet, you know, the 10th of the month, or we're going to meet on a certain day of the week. Um, because having that consistency and that structure helps people plan the rest of their time and make sure that they can, they can get there. Um, and back to kind of what I was saying at the beginning of this, uh, which is having a, a neutral ground to meet. Um, I've tried to participate in some other groups that meet at people's houses, um, and some of which actually rotated locations. And it sounds democratic on the surface, but actually it's really hard to get new people to get into that groove of, okay, this month we're at so-and-so's, and next month we're in the next town over, and you know, do you have the address, and do you know how to get there? And Logistically, it can just get really complicated really quickly. So I find having one set location, one certain day of the month to meet, um, and keeping that consistent is really helpful. Um, so I hope this conversation um, helps you think about whether you have the outlet that you'd like to have socially with your craft, and if not, if that need isn't being met, um, to encourage you to think about starting a group in your area. Thanks for joining me and uh, happy crafting and I'll see you next time.